time to use. Timing is key. With more than 31 million people having already received their first dose of the vaccine, the government is hoping more tests will mean more freedom. But Labour argue a key group is being left out, those who will have to self-isolate and lose pay as a result. There are many people who are put in an impossible position where they have to make a choice about whether to put food on the table for their families or self-isolate, which is why we're urging in order to fully unlock lockdown and see the economy back in business again, the government will need everyone to take part, especially those who have COVID-19 but not its symptoms. So testing kits will be available for online orders and home delivery. They can also be accessed at local participating pharmacies and testing centres. I don't know if it's the best strategy, but I think um, the more we can do, the better. I think we're at such a critical juncture in terms of um, you know, keeping our gains. The hope is with more people doing these tests, COVID will be kept under control. If you're Arjun, ITV News. A new traffic light system for foreign travel is also expected to be unveiled later. It could allow people to go on summer holidays abroad, though some countries will be off limits. while you're still out there and what when you come back too. If you go to an amber or a red country, then the isolation or hotel quarantine will still apply. Now there are three things that will determine which country goes into which category. The number of COVID cases it has, the number of COVID vaccinations it's given out, and if there are any emerging or new variants. Travellers at a very quiet Heathrow today weren't exactly sold on the idea of the traffic light system. As someone who's vaccinated, I'm not sure what the point is of getting three COVID tests in the span of 10 days. I think everyone should take care of their immune system. Because it's one thing, it's one thing to rely on government regulations, but you need to build your health and your immunity anyway. Now, it's worth remembering that if you live in England, the earliest you'll be able to travel abroad is May the 17th. And now we don't know which country is going into which category just yet, but the government's task force on this will be giving its recommendations to the Prime Minister in exactly a week's time. Some of the finer details expected shortly after that. reporter Shihab Khan is here with me now. Shihab, the Prime Minister is expected to confirm more details. What do you think is coming? Yes, yeah, so we, ha we are expecting a press conference later today. He'll be speaking about whether or not um, England in particular can move on to step two of the government's roadmap out of lockdown. If he confirms that that's what we're doing and we do think that's what he'll say, that will 
mean that on the 12th of April we'll be able to do things that we haven't been able to do for a long time. That includes going to the hairdressers and salons to get your hair cut. There'll be plenty of people at home that are itching to do that. Gyms will reopen so you can do some exercise uh, at gyms. But also hospitality will be able to serve uh, food and drink outdoors. It means you can go to your favourite restaurant or your pub and you can order a drink and you can eat outdoors. They are significant things that people have been waiting for for some time. That does apply to England only. Um, at the moment it appears that we are on track to do that. There are plenty of Conservative MPs that want us to unlock faster but the Prime Minister will address those later this afternoon. She had thanks very much. Hairdressers and barbers across Scotland reopened this morning as further coronavirus restrictions were lifted there. It's four months since Scots were able to get a haircut. Garden centres and homeware stores are also reopening. A vigil has been held to mark the first anniversary of the death of a railway worker. The husband of Belly Mujinga was among those attending the socially distanced ceremony at London's Victoria Station. She died with COVID-19 after reports she was coughed on by a customer. And police in the West Midlands are still questioning a 34-year-old man about the death of a two-week-old baby boy whose pram was hit by a car. It happened in the Brown Hills area yesterday afternoon. Finally, Schitt's Creek was one of the big winners at last night's Screen Actors Guild Awards. trophies including best ensemble in the comedy series. The Crown also won two awards in the drama series category at the virtual ceremony for best cast and best female actor for Gillian Anderson's portrayal of Margaret Thatcher. That's it this lunchtime. Kylie will be here with the ITV Evening News at 6.30. The news where you are follows the national weather. From everyone here though on your bank holiday team, bye bye.